Okay everyone, and now I'm uh, going to show you how to uh, run, do the excitation for this uh, asymmetric, basically, co conductors. Um, so first thing you want to do is, uh, in this case you can see that the coil, uh, in the middle of the coil we have our uh, coordinate system uh, located there. So that what that means is when I select, I'm, I'm going to press O to select the object. When I select the coil um, and I say, um, either right click here or I'll go to the modeler and say surface for example section and I say section of Y and Z it will give me the sections two sections on this coil in the plane of the YZ cut it by the YZ plane um, right and uh, you know in the along the coordinate system that is selected so if the coordinate system or your design is in a way that the coordinate system is not here it's somewhere here you wouldn't get any selection any sections um, to see how you can actually ch and do that and, and bring the coordinate system back to the place that you can run the best you, you can get the best selections go and watch 228 tutorial number 228 uh, of this series of tutorial and basically you can see how you can change and uh, select whatever uh, surface that you want um, in your design to do excitation or plot fill or whatever you want to do okay uh, so I've done the selection and I have these two uh, uh, sections of the coil that I'm, I, I can run the um, excitation on it uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on that and go to the edit and then go to the boolean and then go to, say separate the bodies and get rid of one of these selections because I don't need both of them on the coil selection section one I'm gonna right click and say excitation current and I say coil uh, let's say uh, coil current and I'm gonna put a crazy value for the current just to you know just to make everyone sad and uh, for the type of the current I wanna say it's gonna be in a stranded coil meaning that it has a lot of layers of, um, of of wires what does what it does is basically when you run in the higher frequencies um, you wouldn't have any current effect because it's, the current is going through the tiny sections that are separated from the from each other uh, so this is a strand uh, still you can run eddy current on that and you can study the eddy current inside this uh, coil when even it's stranded but it's kind of you know redundant you don't need to do that okay um, but okay I'm gonna go with the stranded but if it was solid you can definitely do that and you can see that the eddy current effect will actually increases the AC resistance of the coil and and, and, and stuff will happen but for this uh, simulation I'm gonna go stranded and I'm gonna go press OK on that okay and uh, one other thing that I want to do is I want to I'm interested to see for example in uh, the height of one millimeter above this part uh, what will happen if I have a line from here to here okay and I want to go across this line and I want to measure the B as Z the B that's going toward the up and I want to plot that and want to see how much um, eddy current is creating like how much how much B is creating this eddy current around here so that's that's a study that I'm gonna do uh, in that case um, what I need to do is I need to create a box around the, the line that I'm gonna have a line is not part of a model it's just a line that I wanna uh, use that line to basically plot the BZ uh, along that line I wanna create a box along, uh, around the, the imaginary line that I'm gonna have around here and this box is going to be extended from here to here and what it does is basically uh, I want to create this box uh, from vacuum uh, meaning that it, it doesn't do anything but I can say inside this box go crazy on the mesh um, the reason that I'm doing this is because when you have a region for yourself let's 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 go ahead and create the region first to see what I'm talking about uh, let's go to the vacuum and then you say okay I want to have a region around my design and I want to have a similar offset from every side 330 million 303 percent and when I'm pressing OK this is the region that I actually getting to do my calculations you can see that the region is pretty wide and therefore the mesh would be very coarse uh, around around this region unless when it touches this, the surface of my part one or coil or whatever and then in that case the the mesh is going to start being finer and finer uh, 
Now, I was interested to measure something above this part one inside this region where the where the mesh by by default is going to be pretty coarse. So, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I want to create a box uh, out of vacuum, which is, doesn't make any sense to to model it. It's not it's not modeling. It's just a dummy thing that I will say inside this box go crazy on meshing. Okay, let's do this. Then. Um, I want to go to the top view and I want to create a box here. Uh, let's say the box is here, and there we go. I have this box uh, right there. And uh, let's say the thickness and the, the in the z axis, my box is only like you know two millimeter, okay. And uh, the box starts right above the. Oops. Give me an error, please. Thank you. Okay. I, I will double click on the box again. So the box, let's call the box first dummy box, dummy. And uh, let's go ahead and make sure that the box is starting from Z equal two millimeters and the rest is fine, okay? And now that we create the dummy box, right click on the dummy box and go to the assign mesh operation inside the selection and then say, you know what, I wanna make sure that inside my dummy box, you have enough number of elements of tetrahedrals, but make sure that it's not passing 5,000. Okay, that's the maximum number I will let you to do that, but it's a clue for the simulator that understand, oh, 5,000, I was thinking of five. So that's that's good, okay, I will make it like uh, quite intense uh, as uh, when I'm doing the mesh. So this is what we wanna do because we wanna get a good result around this line that we are going to create inside the box, okay? Um, again, you can also select the, the part that we are going to uh, see the eddy current inside that and uh, again we can go to the mesh operation inside the box and say you know this is a mesh operation related to part one and I want to make sure that inside this the number of tetrahedrals are not more than 8000 again the simulator says ooh 8000 that's a relief I thought that's like 80 okay that's uh, I can make it like more intense and more like um, you know uh, deeper inside. Okay, these are all, by the way, initial uh, setup. Doesn't mean that at the end of the past five you have 8,000 mesh inside this. You might actually have like a, like 22,000, but it starts from 8,000 or less than 8,000. Okay. Okay, uh, that is done, and this basically is right here is uh, <clears throat> what we need to do for. Uh, the excitation and uh, and the boundary condition. Okay, uh, one last thing to do is though you go to the modeler and then you go sorry you go to the Maxwell 3D and then you go to the uh, excitation and you do uh, you go to the set eddy effects and in there you don't you you know you say that I don't like displacement current I I just hated it so I just get rid of that I don't want to I don't want to calculate those and also on my coil I don't really need to know what is the eddy current effect on the coil because I already made it like a stranded and I'm not interested to that. I just want to see what's the eddy current that will be induced on my part and that is basically the only thing that you want to check it here. Okay, press OK. And, and now if you... Um, let me just give you a better view of what we have at this time. Okay, so now if you go on the... Uh, oh, one last thing. You want to also uh, define a solution. Uh, right click on the setup and say add solution setup. And you can say, okay, my, you know, my percentage error for delta energy and the total energy is going to be less than 0.2%. Awesome. And when it comes to the solver also, you can say that, you know, the, the, the adaptive frequency, um, you know, 60 hertz is, is pretty normal for many things. But uh, let's go and say 200 hertz or like 500 hertz. Uh, is the excitation frequency and uh, with that you actually get more eddy current effect okay press ok on that and uh, that is that is actually it so if I select this I should see all the beautiful check marks and everything is fine and well defined okay this is the end of the excitation mesh and the boundary setup for this uh, <coughs> asymmetric uh, conduction uh, conductor and I will see you in the next part of this uh, design for, uh, what do you call it, 
analysis and interpretation of the analysis. Okay.